Hello everyone and welcome to week three of Introduction to American Studies. Uh, so I will talk a little bit about your student surveys and then I'll get to the reading for this week. Uh, so I enjoyed reading your student surveys. They gave me, uh, you know, a little bit of a sense of you as individuals and as a group. Um, many of you expressed concerns about staying focused and having quiet place to work. Uh, and these are super common issues and totally understandable, especially while our world is in such upheaval. Uh, most importantly, I wanted to encourage you again to give yourself a break, uh, not only to physically take breaks here and there, but also psychologically to just acknowledge and tell yourself that it's okay if you're not at 100% capacity, and I know I'm not. I will email you all an article that has some useful suggestions on how to stay focused and how to have compassion for yourself in this moment. Uh, many of you also expressed specific concerns about anxiety and depression, and so I just wanted to say that I too have struggled with this for many, many years, uh, and for me it was a combination of talk therapy and medication that helped me to manage my moods. So don't forget that Rutgers has a free counseling center, which I highly recommend. Uh, and I'm always happy to talk about mental health issues because there's such a stigma that prevents people from getting the help that they need. So if you would like to talk to me about anything you're going through, please reach out. I also enjoyed seeing the variety of interests and expertise that you're all bringing to the table. Uh, we have a lot of psychology majors in the group, also a lot of biology and public administration, but uh, really everything from medical imaging to art history to information systems, which I'm not even sure what that is. Uh, so I'll try to connect the reading to your interests as much as possible, and I encourage you to do so in your reflections. Uh, this, week, re week, this week's reading should be particularly fascinating for those of you who are interested in the sciences, especially medicine and criminal justice, uh, as well as math, business, really any field that uses quantitative data and statistics. And if you think that statistics are objective, prepare to be challenged. So this week's reading is the introduction to Khalil Gibran Muhammad's The Condemnation of Blackness. I had originally assigned chapter two, but when I went back and looked at it, I decided that the introduction is a bit easier to understand. If you've already read chapter two, that's fine. You can write about that as well. Uh, I will warn you that the reading is about the relationship between black people and the criminal justice system. So it may reinforce some of the pain and grief that's already coming up for you in this moment. Uh, this is perhaps the most timely reading we will cover all semester because it is fundamentally about where this idea of black criminality or the stereotype that black people are prone to crime comes from. And this idea really is at the heart of these debates about police brutality uh, because over and over again people justify the use of force by police by saying that victims either are a criminal or looked like a criminal. So quite simply, Muhammad asks, where does this idea come from? How did Americans start to associate blackness with crime in a way that we do not associate whiteness with crime? And he finds that it goes all the way back to the late 19th century and to the use of statistics. So why the late 19th century? The, the 1890s to be specific. Well, the Civil War is over, and black people are technically free citizens, but the white elite are not having this and start to put policies in place to reestablish white supremacy. They do this by politically restricting the right to vote. They do this economically by forcing black people to work for white landowners or incarcerating them and forcing them to work as free prison labor. They do this socially by segregating public spaces and allowing white vigilantes to terrorize black people into submission. So these are all the modern systems of white supremacy that we still face today that are put in place after the Civil War. So by the 1890s, you have large communities of black people who are legally free but have not been allowed political, economic, or social freedom. And so unsurprisingly, we see high rates of poverty, disease, and crime. 
And here is where Muhammad says that statistics are being used to explain these inequities. And he shows how white social scientists looked at these crime statistics and made a very different interpretation about crime amongst black people and crime amongst white people. So they said that the reason that there was high rates of crime in poor black communities is because they are black. So poverty and racism had nothing to do with it, and therefore there was no point in doing anything to address it except just throwing everyone in prison. However, these same social scientists looked into why there were high rates of crime in poor white immigrant communities, and they said that the problem was not because they were white, the problem is because they were poor, and the problem is because they were immigrants. So to address poverty, they called on society to do everything possible to help these immigrants get a job and an education so they could turn away from crime. And to address the fact that they were immigrants, they created a third racial category. So in addition to white and black, people were categorized as foreign-born white. And this therefore statistically separated out the inferior white immigrants from the native-born whites which brings us back to the Jacobson reading for last week, right? So this is another way in which this dynamic is playing out where white immigrants are considered inferior to non-immigrants, but they're considered superior, right, to black Americans. And so with this foreign-born white category, you have this sort of magical thing that happens, which is the next generation who's born in the United States is automatically born into the white category. So they're literally statistically assimilated into whiteness. Whereas, of course, it didn't matter where a black person was born, they were always just categorized as black. So to summarize this hypocrisy that Muhammad is revealing, when black people committed crimes, social scientists said that it was because of their race and there was no point in helping them. Whereas when white people committed crimes, social scientists said that it was because they were poor immigrants and that they must be helped to assimilate into dominant white society. And they used the language of statistics to make all of this sound like objective fact, when really they were just ignoring other possible interpretations of the data. And Muhammad shows how black social scientists tried to argue for other non-racist interpretations of the data. And they argued instead that black people who committed crimes should be treated the same way as white people were, as individuals who were struggling and needed help. Furthermore, they argued that racist policing was exaggerating the rates of crime in black communities in the first place. And by the 1920s, Muhammad shows how black activist intellectuals like Ida B. Wells and W.E.B. Du Bois built a movement against racist policing and against police brutality that is an ancestor of the movement for black lives that we see growing so massively today. So Muhammad challenged my understanding of America by showing how this popular racist stereotype of black people as criminals goes all the way back to the late 19th century and was a part of reestablishing white supremacy after the Civil War. And he also shows how white social scientists used statistics to distinguish black people from white immigrants and therefore to argue that race was the cause of crime amongst black people as opposed to poverty or discrimination. So often people say that racism is about being uneducated and that poor white people are the main purveyors of racism. But here we see that highly educated white scientists are the ones that are promoting these racist ideologies. And it makes me very vigilant as a white scholar to look for how racism might be shaping my own interpretations of data. So these are my thoughts on the reading for week three. Uh, apologies again for changing up the reading at the last minute, but I hope you enjoy the introduction. And your reflection and discussion board posts are due Sunday by midnight as usual. And I will see you all next week.